made me think of um, interneurons, I think they're called. Neurons that are in the brain that um, aren't connected to anything but other neurons. In other words, they're not connected to uh, directly, at least, uh, you know, to our skeletal muscles and our rest of our bodies. They're only connected to other neurons in the brain. Um, so maybe when we fall asleep and we go into REM sleep, the body is, is sort of disconnected of these interneurons, maybe we are able to pay attention to a realm of pure, purer awareness. Awareness, not necessarily pure, because there's still something happening. We still as a body, even still something or somewhere, and we exist. Deep sleep to be totally here and yet your awareness during deep sleep I mean I actually watched my video before I watched your video because I hadn't seen that video in a while and um, I wasn't really trying to take any quantity of meditation and I think uh, it's funny that you probably didn't watch the video I just posted um, about meditation, and it's funny that you responded to this video. It was um, the video I just posted about meditation. What you're responding to is in the related uh, column. So um, if you haven't watched that video first, it's, this is kind of weird. But, um, Meditation. Think about it, and I don't think it can be taught. I don't think such a thing as the method of meditation. There's no one way. There's lots of roads, and they all lead to one destination. Meditation, I don't think, though, isn't just for escaping the body. I think it can also be something that we do while we're existing. Because if it's really, if we're really going to meditate to be liberated and to find uh, a cure for suffering, just leave the body. Because it'll only be temporarily because we're going to come back to our bodies if we're, if we're only floating off in these, in these interneurons and our connections. that we're free from the body. We can meditate even while we are in our bodies. Uh, like I said before, even in dreams, you still have a dream body. It's just a subtler body. But it's still there. You have more freedom with it. And it may extend into the environment to the extent that your dream is lucid and you can make things appear. But you're still... Your existence is, is conditional. You have a surrounding. You're encompassed by this world. A dream world, albeit, but still. Knowing that, in this real body, meditation can be coming to see that, you know, in a sense, the dream never ends. And never outside of ourselves. Which is the whole trick of trying to meditate. You can't try to do it. Because you are not what you think you are. Um, you know, we, tr we try to sell meditation as this, as some kind of gimmick that's going to cure you of, of something. As though it's, uh, yeah, sit 45 minutes every day and try not to think, and eventually you'll be enlightened. How it works, and is that even possible? I mean, for modern people in the world that we live in, and the society, and the dynamic, and stuff that's going on. I mean, you have to have a job, and you have to make a living, and it's stressful, and you don't always have a perfect uh, schedule. I mean, meditate every day. Meditation means, you know, sitting 
in silence. Uh, but if we can extend meditation, bring it back into the body and back into the world, then maybe we can be aware of everything we do, not just aware of what we do when we sit in a quiet room. Because, um, you know, when the phone rings or when someone knocks on the door, uh, or when a meteor crashes through the ceiling. You gotta wake up, because there's a, there's a world out there. And, uh, you can't just sort of leave the universe and get sucked up out of the body. We have to come into the universe and accept our position here. And that's maybe the, me the meditation or the mediation between heaven and earth. Where even though Buddha is enlightened, he returns to earth to help others. That's 